Yo, 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 Icon Nation, what it is, man? It's your boy, Erdy G. Icon Nation, what's the word? It's your boy, Nick. What's up, Icon? It's your boy, Jalen. And this is another episode of the Toxic Icon Podcast. But you can see where we at. We at Limp Brewery for the Darkness Audition. So this is a very special episode. We're going to give y'all an inside look at how we get down from the ghoul school all the way to the first day. Arr. Right now, we are heading into the actor area at the Limp Brewery Haunted House. We are going to be taking you through, giving you a live look at what the audition process is like for the Haunted House. Getting everything live, raw, direct, uncut, yes. getting it right now. As yes. you can see, Don't scratch me. we have everybody, everybody here at the Haunted House. These are all new actors for the Haunted House. Including b Ferg. Including b Ferg. <laughs> for the darkness, for the Limp Brewery, for Creepy World. They're going to be auditioning, seeing if they have what it takes to be the next baddest, scariest actors in the St. Louis area. It's going down tonight. Auditions are about to kick off in just a second. Mike, show us how it's done. B Ferg is about to kick it off. B Ferg, show us what you got. He said they're coming from the ceiling. I don't like rats. Good job, good job, good job. We got Austin Gritman in the floor. Hey, Austin, 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 go again, go again, go again. Hop back in there again. There it is. That's the real deal. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Hi, Mike. And that's how it's done. Yes, it is. That's how it's done. Oh, yeah. Let's see somebody We need somebody new to hop in. Good job. Good job. She's discombobulated. <laughs> Very scary. She's bringing it. Oh, yeah, that was good. That was good. That's good. Definitely. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, we got, we got Nick. Big. Nick, uh-oh, Uncle Barry. Mike Cox. <laughs> Mike. It's actually Mike Killian now. Oh, yeah, Mike Killian. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. He had some women. Uh-oh. <laughs> My goodness. Someone get 
Exorcist trailer. Don't be shy. see our actors here are auditioning showing us if they have what it I'll takes to work Kenneth. in the haunted house the baddest haunted houses in Go the ahead, land sir. the darkness in the limp brewery and creepy world haunted house you we got one that more left reason, she hasn't gone in the circle yet but we need you to go out there oh, well, oh, D. Oh, here. come on hop in that circle well, oh, hop in He's a transfer from Cobb Factory, guys. We have Will O.D. right here. Come on, Will O.D. Show us what you got, man. Oh, he's taking off his glasses. Howard with his audition for the Haunted House. All right. Is there one more? I think we got one more. I think we got one more left to go. The sad clown. People have just auditioned, shown us if they have what it takes to be a part of the haunted house. We are going to take the microphone around and see what these applicants feel about their audition. So let's go around and see what people think. So we got my boy Wilson here, Will O D. Wilson, tell us how you feel about working the haunted house. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. It's uh, lots of fun. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to do with my hands right now. Uh, You're good, man. It don't matter. You're yeah, no, I love it. You know, I love it, man. How how did you get into haunting? Oh, uh, I was 15, actually, when I got into haunting. Uh, my cousin, he was like, hey, man, you got to come do this job. It's so much fun. Like, you should try. And it's like, all right, tried it out. And it was like, I was great at it. And it's like, what? man, I don't know. I just loved it ever since. Couldn't get away from it. This is my big brother right here. Taught me a lot about working in the haunted house. We've done it for a long time. Appreciate you for getting on for it. Appreciate it. We move around and see what people think. We got my boy B. Ferg right here. Brian Ferguson in the house. How you Tell doing? us, man. How you doing? What do you think about haunting? How, oh, did you get, how did you get into haunting? How did you get into it? I got into it when I was seven years old, man. So I've been doing this for a good 16, 17 years. I've almost lost count now, but yeah. I've been doing it for a long time. And this is what I live for. My, October, you know, that's the one month out of the year that I get to be someone who I'm not every day. And that's just what I love to do. I felt that, and I know you previously worked at Raven's Curse Haunted House as well as was it Woodlawn Haunted yeah, Woods? Yeah. What was that experience like, and how is that different compared to working here at the Haunted House? Uh, I would say here's a little <laughs> more professional. Uh, got a lot more sets, but um, the Woodlawn Haunted Woods, I 
spent so much of my time of my childhood there. Shout out to them. Uh, they're going on their 20th year, I believe. Um, working outside's another thing. You got to work in the in the tough terrains and stuff like that. Creepy World would know a lot about that. Shout out to Creepy World. They definitely would. Yeah, but I'm I'm at Lemp now this year. Um, Lemp Haunted House. Uh, come out and see us this October. I love it here. Definitely. Make sure you check out the Lemp Brewery. Appreciate it, Befer. All right, all right. Let's see who we got next. Who we got next? Who am I getting on the podcast next? What's your name? Anjali. Anjali. I like that a okay. whole hour. This is your first year working the Haunted House, right? Yes. What Haunted House are you working? Uh, the Darkness. So what made you want to do this? What inspired you? What made you want to get into it? What did it? So I'm a big like horror movie and like Haunted House type of fan. I love all of that. And I'm, I'm really into slasher movies. So, like, especially, like, well, not, well, I know the darkness, like, you're not running around and stuff, but it's like, I don't know, just, you know, seeing people, people scream is just funny. It's definitely a good time. You excited about working? Yeah, I'm so excited. All right, cool. We'll make sure we see you this October. Appreciate you for getting on with us. Let's keep, let's see, let's see who we got, who we got. We following the crowd, following the crowd, following the crowd. Uh-oh, we got Kenzie. Kenzie. Is this your first year working at Haunted House? Yeah. Are you excited? I'm fucking stoked. So what made you get into haunting? What <laughs> so, what drove you there? Ever since I was 12 years old, I started getting into like prosthetic makeup and stuff. And every year for Halloween, I'd do some crazy like jaw type thing. I'd make these jaws come off my face, make my own outfit out of like garbage bags, things at my disposal. And uh, I just kind of took off. Everybody kind of loved it. I eventually started wearing it to school. And then we had this Halloween competition. And then I got first place. I scared everybody. Nobody knew it was me. They had to look at my ID. They're like, Kenzie, that's you? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Well, that's what's up. Are you excited about working this year? So excited. Looking forward to it? Yes. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you for doing this with us. All right, we got another host of the Toxic Icon right here, Yerdy G. Yes, yes, yes. Yerdy. Yes. You were called upon to go out on the floor and hold it down for the vets, and you went first. I was nervous, man. I, I, I felt like I was going to go on myself. I well, was we glad you didn't go. I didn't, because I just ate. <laughs> yeah, true. No, for real, uh, man, this is, this is an amazing opportunity, especially since, you know, we get to show not only one to two year events, but also the new people how it's done. Definitely. So it's, it's, it's an amazing experience. This is my 21st and final year. He'll be back. We said it episode yeah. one, he'll be back. He ain't going nowhere. I'm done. Come here, Jalen. Oh, we're going to be back. You know you always do. I'm done. Nope, we got... Done. Jalen Talley, yes, Jalen Talley in the house, another host of our Toxic Icon podcast. Jalen, what got you into haunting? Why are you still here? What brings you back every year? And how do you feel being here? We're shooting in the Limp Brewery. How do you feel? Oh, dude, Limp is awesome. I mean, the history behind it obviously is so good. Um, what got me started was probably just horror in general i loved horror movies like you know scaring people and stuff like it just that was my passion and then uh what keeps me coming back is the people um just like and then it's like addicting scaring people so i like, can right. like, having that like urge to scare like, it makes you come back for more you know yeah. what i'm saying like it it's one of those things where we talk about in the studio and it we're able to talk about hunting in the studio, but when we come to the actual haunted house, when you're in that environment, that is what makes us want to do this every year. For sure. We start here. In case you guys didn't know, this is the actor area right here. This is where the costumes go on, the makeup goes on, everything. And then we take it further down into the haunted house. So I'm excited about this oh, season, man. Oh, I'm looking forward so to good. it. Yeah. I'm definitely looking so forward good. to it. Let's, uh, let's keep it rolling here and see who we got. We got Austin in the house. Austin, Gritman. First off, hold this up real quick. This is our, our dedicated actors, man. They're going to make props. They're going to make props in order to, to carry that costume and push it over the edge. Austin, how did you get into haunting? What made you want to join the haunt? And what keeps you coming back for more? This is your first real full season. What's got you in that? Uh, what got me really into this was their first year, well, it was the 20th anniversary of The Darkness, okay. and uh, it was like unreal, the actors were crazy, the scenes were crazy, 
and I just wanted to go as being an actor, and uh, really I kind of started started into it. Uh, love horror, love everything Halloween. So I just thought, you know, 30th anniversary, why not, why not be somebody who is just going as a guest the 20th, right. but be more like a family member in house for the 30th anniversary to scare people. So. That's awesome, man. If y'all didn't know, Austin Gritman is a giant supporter of the Toxic Icon podcast. We appreciate you, man. Seriously. Um, I know you've been to places like Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, you've been to a few different haunted houses, correct? Like not Scarefest haunted houses and yeah, things like that? Yeah, Scarefest with small stuff. I went over to Gatlinburg uh, this year, and I think it was Miss Mystery Manor. I could be okay, yeah, Mystery uh, Manor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a little small stuff, but the darkness is, is where it's at. It's always been for me, so. Give me two things you're looking forward to this haunt season. Oh, my gosh. So many things to look forward to. I think it's the memories with everybody. True. Everybody is really tight in it. Uh, I feel like it's going to just be a special year. And, um, yeah, just looking forward to the memories. And I know this year's going to be a really good one, a big one. So It's going to be a good season. We appreciate you for doing this with us, dude. Thank, Thank you. Guys. So I think so cool. now we've had a lot of oh, interviews yeah. within the room. I think we are going to take it down a level, down into the haunted house itself, show a little bit around, and show y'all the environment that we truthfully work in. So why don't we take it out this way and see what we could do. So now we are leaving the actor room at the Limp Brewery haunted house. And we are going to be taking it oh. down a level. And as we descend down these stairs, six stories underground where no one can hear you scream. This is, this is where it all begins. This is where it us. all begins. This was the middle of the road for myself. Now, as we come down here, please be mindful. It's dark. And yes. everything that you hear, everything that you hear about, everything that you've heard about, everything that you know about. It's all factual. It's all factual. It's real. We got a light. We're taking you down here. You are getting an exclusive behind the scenes look. Of Lim Brewery. At the Lim Brewery Haunted House. So you already want you to take us in. All right. So we should, we should definitely go the back way. We're gonna go to the left here. This and is actually the back side. Yeah, this is how we hunt. get this is how we get from the the middle ground of the hunt to the end of the hunt, this back way here. And for those who may not know, most haunted houses do have an actor cut so that you can get around and get a more effective scare on somebody and it creates an illusion as if you've been following that person, but the whole time you really weren't. Luckily for us, the lights are also on down here, so you get a good look at everything that we have down here in the haunted house. Yes, it's not wet tonight either. You already want we started right here. Okay. Yes. So this this is what they call the fermenting room. Uh, this was one of the pathways that the limps took to. To, you know, of course, get their illegal beer from point A to point B. And for those who may not know, back when the Limp Mansion or the Limp Brewery was in operation, there was no refrigeration back in the day. So these caves down here, the Cherokee Cave System, they kept this was cool. used to keep everything cool. This was their former refrigeration. Yes, it's a cool 60 degrees, sometimes 50, depending on the month. And as we go through... The actual haunted house. This is what the customers go through. This is the attraction. This is what they line up outside and pay their $25 for to go through. And as we come through, we have more barrels, more boxes. <clears throat> more bodies. Now, Definite more bodies. Now, fun fact, I did, in fact, work at Lim Brewery for a stint of six years. You already did work here for six years. 2012 to 2017 consecutively. I want to stop right here just for a second. Right here is what we have. This is called a prop uh, for those who may not know. Yes. Uh, but within the haunted house, these props are used 
to create an extreme illusion. Um, when you come through the haunted house and you see this prop right here, you are fixated on this prop. But what you're not focused on is that actor that's standing in the corner right there. That's just stalking and you. And that way we are able to get a scare. You're not fixated on the speaker that's right here. This speaker is giving you all the sound in the haunted house. These props right here are creating that illusion so that us in the costume, we're the last thing you think about. Yep, you see this guy shaking and you hear all the blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, we're just plotting on you the whole time. Then next thing you know, it's the whole plan, whole point, get the effective scare. Yeah, that's what we call a way. diversion. Now the Limp Brewery Haunted House is set up a little different than most haunted houses. To get into this haunted house, you have to go down a spiral staircase. You have to go six stories underground where nobody can hear you scream. Most haunted houses start immediately right at the door. But this haunted house is a little different. It is a little wet down here, y'all. A little moist. At all times. At all moist, times. Moist, Nick. It's a little moist. <laughs> <laughs> As we follow through this way, there we have the this gun. is gun. one of the scariest yes. and the baddest scenes. In yes. the Lint Brewery Haunted House. There is definitely a ritual going on at, at this particular exactly. point. They may be sacrificing something. I don't know what it is. but um, <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Maybe they went to Dave's Hot Chicken. Yeah, it looks like it. That's what it is. <laughs> it's leftover. You know, he, uh, he looks hungry too. So. Oh, that's a cat. That's a cat. I did not know oh, that. Then that's what it is. It's a cat. So. Okay, so Yerdy and Jalen, I want to ask y'all. Yes. We are downstairs in the historic Lint Brewery Haunted House right now. When y'all see scenes like this, we see it with the lights on, right? Yeah. These customers don't see this. Right, they with see these it, they on. see it with the lights off. So it's it's a more sinister feeling because exactly. down in Lint Brewery it's actually pitch black every night. So what do you think about these scenes? What what does this scene give you? What is the feeling that this scene gives you if you are coming through as a customer? Devil worship. I mean, it's definitely a dark scene. Are you running through this scene? That's the question. Are if you I, cutting this corner yes, right as here? A, as a customer, when I come from here, as soon as I see this, I'm hugging the wall. Yeah. I'm hugging the wall, trying to stay as far away from them. And as soon as I see this, I'm backtracking. Now, here's the next thing, though. As an actor, let's, let's, let's flip the script. This is your scene. Um, this is your opening night. This is your first night ever working a haunted house, both of y'all. Y'all first time. Oh, I'm nervous. But where are you all hiding? How are you going to utilize this oh, scene? Because I'm that's what does that's that doesn't get talked about. I'm right here in this corner. So I'm um, right here or behind there. Okay, that's a good scene. Yeah. So honestly, either this corner or I think on the other side of this post right here is a really good spot. Or I might just be right here pretending like I'm just like, you know one of them. You could create the illusion. Yeah, yeah that, that's where I'm going with it. I'm going to wear one of these robes. I'm going to act like I'm praying. I might even act like I'm an animatronic. Just There it is. He got let it. it. Let about two or three people <laughs> go by, and the next person is right. over. It's all about creating the illusion. Yep. You have and to create the diversion. Definitely. And let's keep moving this way and show a little bit more. It's all about making the customer feel safe enough that they can walk by I love and this pounce scene. on them. This now, this scene right here, this is a very interesting scene. Matter of fact, I'm going to come over here because I want the audience to get a feel. Get the full illusion. I want y'all to get a feel for the flow of the haunted house. For those of you who may not work haunted houses, you got to know and understand the flow is essential. Yeah, there's, flow there's... is extremely important. And if the flow is messed up, your whole haunted house will be backed up from the get-go. Yeah. The customers come in this way. And as they come in, this is the first thing they see right here, these props. Mm -hmm. We have these pews right here, and we have these, these mannequins right here. And this is a good spot. This is a really good spot for an actor to sit. And if I'm dressed up like these two, this is the best way, the best possible way for me to scare you. But the question is, am I going to sit here and hit you right when you come in? Or am I going to let you get comfortable? And am I not going to hit you right here? I'm letting you get comfortable every time. I'm sitting on the last one. Jalen, tell us a little bit about that. Oh, I'm just going to 
Tell us a little bit about that. I'll just be waiting. I think because I'm going to let you get comfortable. I'm going to let you walk through that door. You know, they're probably going to be scared anyway, so they're not going to notice uh, me. So I, I'm going to be like with one of the hoods. So then as soon as they get here, I'm going to go like that. That's a good scare. Definitely. Yeah. That's a good scare. And honestly, you could have a couple of actors in here. Yeah. You really one right could. there yeah. and one right there. One on one side, one on the other, or three in here. One this scene, this curtain. This scene is bad as beast mode. Man. Yeah. It's See, probably the best scene. Yeah. See this? You, you have to let people get comfortable because that element of surprise from right here, all it takes is two people to, to make it a Congo line because you have a multitude of people that come through Hunter House. You have... The startle skirt that runs past you, you have the startle that backs up, and then you have the startle that backs up and just stays there. And that and, goes back in the flow. Yeah. Yep, that goes back into the flow. And think about it. If you have, let's say, five people coming through, all five of them are the back or the startle and back up, Congo line instantly. Right. Because it's going to be to the point that you have to back off, and they still might even be scared to walk past. So that's why that's, up, that's, what it that's why you have to let them get comfortable, let hit the middle of that group as they're walking past you. Next thing you know, two are taking off. The other two might startle and run, and the last person, they're, they're running back. Right. I think there's one more scene that we need to show before we uh, take it back up, and I think that would be the shower scene. Yes. Oh, so my God. This way, and let's get the shower scene. So the shower scene is not for the weak actor. The shower scene is always wet. It's sticky. Sometimes it stinks. The shower scene is a scene for... I would say a person, like experienced actor. Yes, an experienced actor, but also, I would say a smaller person. Yeah. And why would you say a smaller person? So, because think about somebody that's, you know, the size of us three. It's going to be uncomfortable to work that scene. Right. It's going to be very uncomfortable to be there, because more than likely... More than likely, if you were a guy, you're going to have no, no top on. True. And if you're a girl, you're going to have a nightgown on. So it's going to be really uncomfortable to be in that extremely wet room all night. If you're a person, you know, our size and, and bulk. I was actually happy when he put this thing in. Yeah, this is a good area right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whoa! Gordon! Y'all hear something? I also feel like the good thing about this scene, and we'll touch on it a little more once we get to it, but the really good thing about this in particular scene is probably the fact that you can use the area to your advantage. Exactly. Full-fledged. This area can be used in many different ways because it's a four-way scene. That's and with true. a four-way scene like that, I mean, the possibilities are really endless. Right, because you can hit the customer from like any this. angle. And then you can kind of toy with them a little bit before they even get to the scene. Right. As you can see here, this is more of a, a different theme down here, more of a, a garage type of um, tool shed, butcher shop <sighs> kind of scene here. And uh, I will warn you, when you come to the Limp Brewery, the smells that you smell are real. Yes. Please be advised. <laughs> so what we have here is the infamous, infamous, infamous shower scene. <laughs> now this scene, yeah, see, you always got to be on your toes. This scene is all about timing. This scene is all about movement. You cannot just stay in one spot and try and bring it that way. You got to bring it in a million different ways. This scene has a hideaway here, a hideaway here, one here, and one around this corner. The biggest thing with this scene is that customers get lost. So while you use this scene to scare in many different ways, it's on you to keep them moving forward. The ultimate goal, regardless of if they get lost, is for them to go right through this door. And if they don't go through this door, you once again, backing everything up and yeah. that's the biggest thing about scenes like this you want to use all of the floor space you have to scare these people effectively 
and quickly, but you still want to get them through that door. But they also can get backed up from getting lost because they can be over here and not even see the door. True. They can consistently run into this wall. They can go this way thinking that that's the exit. And before you know it, you got 20 people in this room. And you're just like, oh, no. <laughs> right. Oh, no. Definitely. And that's the biggest thing. It's like you got to use it to your advantage. I see six different areas right now not even moving around that I could use to scare people. And I'm not just going to stay in this corner yeah, the whole my time. My favorite one. In between here. Now, the best thing is, or not the best thing, but the most important thing is, in terms of moving these people through the haunted house, without breaking character, how are you doing that? Because if you hit them right here, they're going back the way yeah, they came you, in. You have, to, you have to be quick like a snake. You have to creep around through here, you know, let them actually get right here, and then just pounce on them from behind to force them that way. Exactly. Exactly. You definitely have to push them a certain way, but either way, they have to go back through that door. And then for the people who get stuck, you have to come around through her and then, pow! Right. I heard a uh, guy upstairs say, you can't touch them? You can't yeah. touch them. No, definitely you cannot touch, touch people. Outside, outside, probably, yeah, touch them because then, you know, you have, like I said, you have a multitude of different people that come through. You have some people that they get really scared, even if it's an accident. And then you'll have the, the really prissy, privileged people that'll come through. I'm going to sue you. And the whole time, you didn't even mean to bump into them. Yeah, they'll touch us, though, by me. But like, yeah. yeah. And you'll yeah. get close to them. They'll, Why are you touching me? Yeah. I'm not touching you. You're just very sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really does get like that in the haunted house. Yeah. So. Jalen, tell us, like, when it comes to touching people in the haunted house, we work outside in the lines where people can be very hands-on with us even yeah. though that's not what's supposed to happen but the crowd can definitely be touchy mm -hmm. how do you navigate that outside the haunted house well i think i mean an exception is like obviously when we're like doing photo op i mean because they have to like i mean i think that's okay i mean right some you know some yeah. will put their arm yeah. around your shoulder you, or they'll yeah. ask for a high five yeah. i mean that's kind of i think unavoidable but uh but i'm talking about for the ones that they're, your they're, space oh, is okay, there yeah. your distance is um, there but here i am yeah, I, I, what do you do about that? Well, I'm probably staying in character, but I'm gonna ask like nicely, you know, uh, in like my character voice, I'll say it or like, you know, don't touch me because I'm 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 not gonna touch you or you're, or like back off and I'll go like that, you know. Do it in your uh, character voice. So. Yeah, that way you're not ruining the experience, but you're still being stern. Yeah. Don't touch me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. I definitely do it that way. <gasps> don't touch me. And people will be like, bro, what? I didn't even touch you. No, you did. You did, and we can't touch nobody. Exactly. We can't touch you. Y'all don't touch us. Yeah. Number one rule: all haunted houses all over the place don't touch anybody. Right. You may get a fist bump on the photo op. Yeah. yeah fist bump, high five. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Arm around the shoulder. So that's what I think. That's that's what I think is the biggest thing. Yeah. No touching, none of that. Well, I think we've shown enough. Uh, we're not going to show the rest of the haunted house because y'all need to pay our money to get down here. Right. We don't want to give it away. To the haunted house. Um, I think, Yerdy, you know the way out. Yes, do. Take us on back up. We, we going to the promised land. All right, Icon Nation. So we are back upstairs in the actor area. So we're going to give you guys another inside look. So go back to episode two. We talked to our actor manager, Jen, about how things kind of worked out for her in the hunt industry. Now we're going to take it back to the big man and the love of her life, Mr. Mike. Mike Killian. He right there. <laughs> Mike, how's it going? It's going good. It's going, it's going good. Good, good, good. Are those clubs or? Oh, okay. Yeah, we were definitely. Yeah, we were, I was getting worried. Coming He's coming to <laughs> put a knot on my head. I might. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bottom I have line. to drive home all the way to Florida. Come on. So, now. Mike, we would love to hear from you, man. Yeah. You know, we we talked to Jen about how you know how things worked out, yeah, how yeah. about how you guys met. Haunted House, man. Haunted House is like. Uh, Every aspect of my life, 30 years. As a matter of fact, I, I started here, Ray and I started here. Come here, Ray. When I was 16, yeah. um, we actually, we went through the haunted house, came out, we loved it so much. We went back through a second time, we had Doughboy, and we saw the owner, we didn't know it was the owner, and we were like, hey, uh, how do we get a job here? He said, come back tomorrow at five. So I came back the next day, and I have been doing it for, every day since full-time career 
and then uh, met my beautiful wife at Creepy World. Uh, now my daughter works at the Haunted House. She's 23, section leader. It's like every every aspect of my life is inundated with Haunted House. It's generational. It is, it is. And hopefully it's not for another decade, but when my daughter makes me a grandfather, you know, we'll, we'll get the little one into it. <laughs> okay. So, Mike, in terms of how you got into haunting, mm -hmm. I know you, were you an, a co-owner of Raven's Curse? No, I, I GM'd uh, Raven's Curse, but the owner did not want to be uh, known. Okay. So what we basically did is we told everybody it was my haunt so that he could do his own thing. Right. And when there were issues with like the police department and the fire department, they would come to me so that he could just do, do Facebook and right. tickets and stuff like that. So I, I mean, I would love to own my own haunt one day, but wouldn't we all? Wouldn't we, all? we definitely right? would own our own. Uh, and uh, what was, how did that come about? What was building that like? You have a lot of experience in scenic work and things like that within the haunted house. And what was that like? Yeah, that was, so we started Ravens. Kip's always wanted to have a haunted house. And when we broke away from Larry, we spent a year not having anything. So when you go through a haunt season after, like say you've been doing it for 15 years and you go through a season with no haunt, we all know that it's, it gets to you. Yeah, it's like you're you get the jitters. Yeah, yeah, you start picking at stuff, and it's like. Uh, so we found a really cool location in Illinois. Uh, it just turned out that it was in such a small town. We didn't do enough people. So on a busy night at darkness, we can do more people than Ravens would do in a season. Really? That's how small the area was. Now. The owner was from a small town in Illinois, and he said, oh, yeah, growing up, you know, everybody would drive a half hour just to do anything. You want to go to a movie, you had to drive a half hour, 45 minutes. So we thought maybe we could get a draw, but we didn't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we found the building, and it was beautiful. It had air piped in so we could put animations anywhere we wanted. It had electric rails so we could put props anywhere we wanted. We didn't have to, like, strategically build the haunt. And then uh, just ground up. All new, everything themed, animations, everything brand new. And I honestly, it's my favorite haunt ever. Like it was beautiful, it was scary. Um, we were behind a pickle factory, so it always smelled like vinegar outside, so it was stinky. <laughs> yeah. And it was like. What a honey house should be. It yeah, adds yeah. to the aesthetic. We didn't need to buy Froggy's Fog Scents. We, like, it smelled. So, and it was, uh, it was not very unlike darkness whereas it was very family like everybody was tight knit everybody like hung out after work people would show up real early and we would just like barbecue or hang out yeah. so hey i'm gonna tell you guys right now i don't know if this is good for the podcast but it's we're gonna try and do armory for the cast party oh really yes yeah we're gonna just cool. we're gonna skip over larry i'm gonna ask him for money because the armory is wonderful. We love that place. And it's in the, it's in the Central West End. It's right down the street. Yeah. yeah. So. Our Veterans City Museum. <clears throat> Thank you. And Too we talked about that on the podcast, just like the family aspect of working in the haunted mm -hmm. house, having cast parties and things like that help to build camaraderie within the haunted house. That is important. If you work at a haunted house and you guys do not have any kind of camaraderie like that, take that to your manager. That right. is important. Your, your, your business will fall without camaraderie. That's it's right. going to keep people in the door. It'll if keep people don't want to be around each other in the haunted house, they're just there to collect a paycheck. Now you're, it's, it might as well be McDonald's. It's a job. But like, like we do it because we love it. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to pay us. We're going to get paid. But right, right. still, it like should, I... There should be some type of family aspect to it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what I try to tell people. If you are haunting because you just need to make ends meet, I understand. But at the same time, you're not going to... It's not going to be worth it for what you do. Put your body through the extensive physical uh, fatigue that you go through to go, you know, working on a house and things like that. It's just not even worth it. Yeah, honestly, we the the pay scale has increased this year. I'm, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but it's it's better. But still, like you said, scaring people all night long, screaming, yelling, banging into things. You know, you saw that kid flopping on the floor. Like, right. are you gonna do that every night? Right. No, he's, Good. He's That'll be, be awesome. Be, but it's gonna be war out by Yeah, October. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, you gotta. I don't mean this in a bad way, but you have to have a little. Like, screw loose. 
just so that you can appreciate the horror in it and, and the comedy you guys know, icons know better than anybody. Making people scream, pee their pants, and then laugh. Right. That's a trifecta. It's like, I got everything out of you I need. I can move on to somebody else. Yeah. And if you don't yeah. give one, you get the other. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if yeah. You don't, right. If you don't get the scare, you get the laugh. And if you don't get the laugh, they might have pissed on themselves. Yeah. Like, right. you, know, we're, you, we're you never know. entertainers. Right. Like, we're yeah. not the old school idea of Haunted House where it was just, <laughs> bah, bah. Like, we want to entertain people. We like that separation of reality. By the time you walk in the front door, you're already in this mindset of I'm, this is a horror movie. And I'm the, I'm the final. And yeah. I'm, yes, exactly. I'm not going to die first. And then you get out at the end, and then you can breathe and laugh and talk to your friends. And, yeah. But we don't want to break that separation of reality. You want people to be in it the whole time. Right. And without icons out front, I think it would, we would. It would be dead because they would be waiting. They would be upset. We They're, stood out here for an hour and then we got inside. Okay, yeah, it looks cool. It's right, they don't, they don't have anything to fall back on to, to fill that void and while a, they're waiting in line. Absolutely. Right, and at a big time haunted house, I mean, you don't want to wait in line for two, three hours with no form of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. especially so if there's it's no important. radio station there. Yeah. Right, and we haven't done that in a few years. Right, we used yeah. to have the radio stations outside all the time. Mm -hmm. And Mike, going back to Ravens for a second. Sure. I don't think we ever knew what the true theme of Raven's Curse was. We not that it wasn't out there. We just don't know. Sure. So yeah. what was the backstory of Raven's so Curse? So Raven's Curse was the backstory was that it was um, an insane asylum hospital. So I can't remember the main character's name, but the main character had a daughter. She had social um, instabilities, and then as she grew, she got a little. Psychotic, yeah. and so he built a mental institute for her, but took in other patients to pay the bills. And then, you know, as it happens, everything went haywire. And so, um, we once again, I, I love the darkness, don't get me wrong, but right. the darkness has multiple themes. Right. Um, we were only open five years, so we were able to keep the same theme, even when we redid scenes or changed the maze to keep it that same flow. Right. Um, Which builds on the lore also. It does, it does. We, I, I mean, this is not a joke. You could ask my wife, I don't know if she mentioned it when she was on, but we had customers, a group of customers who gave us a bad review because they believed the story and said that we ruined the building by putting a haunted house in it. <laughs> the, building was, the building was only 25 years old and the only thing it had ever been used for was to make um, marching band or uniforms. It was Jen a, did tell us that. She yeah. told us that on, her, on, on episode That's two. the only yeah. thing that had ever been done in the building and these people believed the backstory so much that they gave us bad reviews and complained that we ruined a historical building. And it was like, in a weird way, that means y'all push that theme out. Yeah. 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 That, that's exactly what that means. The only negative was the review. Like, if you could take right. away the one star and leave your comments, that's great. We love that. Right. No, yeah. That's, that's classic. So, Mike, if you had any advice, because you are now on the, the building side, the GM side yep. of haunting, but you were once an actor, too. Yes, sir. You were in the trenches like the rest of yes, us. Yes, sir. What... Uh, what are some advice you could have given to these kids that audition today that are just getting to start their haunted house careers? I'll tell you, honestly, one of the biggest pieces of advice, and I usually do talk about this at orientation, is I don't want people to get the diva mindset. When people meet you guys, right? Yeah, they, they don't already, know. They already put a stigma on us. They don't know how long you've been doing it, how hard you work to get where you are. They don't know how long I've been doing it, how hard I worked to get. So we'll have first year actors who, granted, I appreciate it, but they want, they strive to, I am going to be somebody. Right. You will, but wait, work hard. Don't, uh, uh, don't burn yourself out. Like the actors, like we, like we said, the twitching guy, don't burn yourself out. You're gonna do great things if you Focus on the scene you're in. Um, one of the biggest things that we have a problem with at Darkness, we all know, is that people don't work the same scene. So they'll work one scene Friday, then Saturday they want to go somewhere else, then next weekend they want to go somewhere. Find a scene, build a character, work that scene. 
If you work that scene all season, by the end of the season, no one can do it better than you. And then that will reflect on your progress that season. And then when you go home at the end of the season and you're thinking, yeah, I did everything I could. All right, next season, new scene. Right. Build a new character, a new mentality. Um, don't let it go. Like this isn't, I'm not saying make a career out of it. Not everybody can do that, but come back every season. Plenty of people do it, and most jobs will work with you. Like, hey, I, you know, I just need this, these nights off. We're open 23 nights at Darkness. Right, well, let me get off early. Let me get off a little early. But, yeah, don't give up on it. You know, we have several actors. Uh, Jeffrey Riva, he's a section leader here now. He was, he was a slow starter. Right. Like, he came with a group of people, and he was a little timid. And right. in second year, he was scarier. And in third year, he was – and then he went to Creep World, and now he's here. And – it's now like, look, man, just, big dogs. yeah, just that, don't give up. And that's true what you said about working one scene on one night, working a different scene the next night. I kind of feel like that's how we all made it yeah. outside mm-hmm. to the queue line. You have to be versatile. You have to mm-hmm. be okay with yeah. changing up your uh, your scene, your your Trying character. Jalen, you got something you want to say about that? Because, yeah. I mean, I know you, you just went from being a clown section lead yeah. well, to a clown outside. What's that like? Well, first, I mean, I started in the hive. I remember that was my first spot. Uh, yes. for like, That's when I came back yeah, from here. For, I think it was for, like, it was my first three years then, but, like, so I started off as just, like, a regular actor. And then my second year I got promoted to, it was uh, when we still had. Uh, the break roamer. Yeah, the roamers, yeah. yeah. And um, so because of the... So I was doing a good job and stuff. And um, then third year was like my first full year actually as a uh, section lead. And then I switched to Terror Visions because that was the last year the Hive was, uh, was gone. Was gone, yeah. And then so that was different, but I enjoyed it because now, you know, I love being a clown. But uh, it was different <laughs> from, from being a zombie to being a clown, you know. But uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, we're. Uh... We're glad you went outside. Oh yeah, we I, miss you yeah. as the zone lead back there, and but yeah, we're I was already having I was, issues finding yeah, replacements. I was, but, but I was ready to try something. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I was, and I was you know saying. what I, I loved about you going outside? As soon as you said you were going to Icon, I was like, great, another clown. And then you weren't a clown. Yeah, I switched it up. Yeah. 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 I was like, yeah. I didn't know you could do something other than clown. Oh yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The first night you saw me back, I hurt myself. Oh my god. <laughs> I said, I didn't think Yerdy was coming back. He said, well, I come back now and then. Yerdy will be back. Yeah. That's right. Episode yeah. one, I said, yeah, Yerdy will always come back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he says, look, he says, this is my 45th know. year, y'all. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Uh, Scary Gary got his own T-shirt this year. What? Is he really? no, I'm not kidding. Like, he got his own T-shirt. Can we get on a T-shirt? That's what <laughs> well, look, I yeah. can we sell these yeah, in the, the talk, gift yeah, shop? Yeah, the talk. I, I'm telling you right now, talk to Larry about that. Because we should have talked to him. I'm yeah. texting him when we leave. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Jen's got her own company. And every time I try to get Larry to buy product for the actors, he says, let's put it all in the gift shop. So he's willing to help. Okay. You know, he's willing, he's willing to help her grow. He's definitely willing to help you guys get your merch out. Ooh, cool. Yeah, dude, tell him. Seriously, talk about it. Yeah, because think about it. Everybody, we could just tell them, hey, it's in the gift shop of the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Then we can maybe expand to the gift shop at Creepy World. No, hold on now. You see what you just did? You did something for Larry. You said you want our merch. (laughs) It's at the gift shop at the end of darkness. Buy a ticket, go through, buy our merch. We're still getting paid, though. You're still getting your pay. Right. He's selling a ticket. Oh, yeah, dude, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> you're holding, I don't know where you're we're holding a microphone time. and he whispered. I know I whispered. I whispered with the mic in my hand. I don't do this on stage, guys. I promise. Man, yes, this this tonight was perfect. Uh, Mike, what are your expectations for all of us? Who's all of us? Every actor in the building oh, and outside. Oh, I want to keep Darkness Reviews top of the line. We aren't the. Uh, uh, biggest, most premier haunt in the country. There are a lot that we all know. They, they've right. got tons yeah. of money, tons of actors, but Darkness doesn't uh, falter when it comes to reviews. We don't have a big out-of-town gathering. You know, we have to keep doing St. Louis people over and over. 
So we have to keep them happy. So as long as the actors scare the the life the life out of people, I want to watch my language, uh, <laughs> and the reviews stay up, you know. Mike's happy. We're all happy. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, you guys don't have to worry because I enjoy sneaking out of the haunt and just coming out front for a little while just to watch the icons. Or if I'm in costume, just to, like, sneak in the group and be an icon Psycho for a little bunny. while. Yeah, I can't still. tell you how many times I've seen you out there in that bunny costume, <laughs> and I didn't realize it was you until I saw your beard. I said, who is that? <laughs> oh, never mind. It's Mike. It's weird they made it's a mask that the hair matched the beard, so I was like, all right. It works. Yeah. Now you can't get rid of it. No, I can't. Even if you were, I know you ain't getting rid of it, but no, you can't no. get rid of it. You definitely can't get rid of it. And I can't shave my beard. My wife wouldn't know who I am. <laughs> Man, I can't get rid of mine you either. You grew your hair back. She wouldn't know who you are. <laughs> You're, I've tried to grow my hair back. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. You know what? He said, it's over. It's over. Yeah, it, looks, it looks good on you, Mike. I broke, I broke 47 two weeks ago in Jamaica, so I'm like, I'm not. See your dad, he's 21. I'm, t- I'm 21. 21. 21. Forever yeah, 21. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, let's, um, let's head on over to the table and see if we can get any – Last minute thoughts about the season, Mike. We appreciate you for hopping on, yeah, talking to us. As always, Mike, it was good. Thanks for making me famous. Of course. You were already Let's shoot famous. on over this way as we oh. near the end of our episode. We got a darkness vet standing oh. right here in front of the table. Hey. How are you just gonna sneak in like that? Right. See, I, I walked up? in, I did a little wave, and you guys were busy, so I just. She's like, "Hi, I'm Paul." Pretty much. <laughs> Can we ask you a couple of questions? Of course. All right. What's your name, date of birth, social, blood type? <laughs> well, my name is Atrice, but you guys know me as Luna. That's Luna. I've been doing this for about a decade now. About, about a decade, years. about a decade, okay. I don't know, give or take. Um, you and I came in the darkness around the same time. Oh, yeah. Um, what brings you back? Honestly, I've been missing it. It's a bit of screen therapy. It helps me with my daily life. I love the haunt scene. And I kind of got into it personally to kind of quell my own personal fears of different things. And it just became a part of me. And now I'm just older and it's like, I can't, I can't give it up. I love doing it. Once you start, you really can't let it go. Um, For those who may not know, I reached out to Luna about a week ago, just telling her you need to get back in the door. You've been away for too long, come back in. What went through your mind when you got that message? Had you already been thinking about it? Was that the sign that you needed? That Where were you? the actual sign. I was sitting at home and I was just thinking about the fact that I kept running into vets and different people that have worked at the Hunt or work at Creepy World or work at Limp. And it was odd because I've never run into this many people off season. I'd ran into someone who had just, I work at the airport. So I just ran into somebody. I ran into you at the airport a couple of times. The first time I saw you, I didn't know it was you. But the second time I actually called out and you look back like, yeah. And then just recently, someone who's on YouTube, I do forget his name, um, had came through and he was telling me about how great it was. He had on a, a Scarefest shirt. And so I'm like, you either are a vet or you're someone that came through and I got to figure it out. I had ran into one of my old clown uh, leaders, Lawrence. Uh, at Shout Water. out to Lawrence. And it was odd because I've never seen him outside of haunt gear. So the fact that I knew it was him was <laughs> hilarious. And so it was just one of those things like, I'm seeing people, I'm seeing people. I saw some, a lady named Lindsay. Shout out to Lindsay who works, I believe she says she works here at LAMP. Um, or she's working at Creepy this year. Uh, I ran into her at the Pink Galleon, and then maybe two days after that, you hit me up, and I'm like, yeah, I have to go. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. much, it has to happen now. Uh, I was already thinking about it. It was pretty much a play on, I'm either going to do it this year or I'm not going to do it this year. And that last match is going, hey, you should come back. It just kind of sealed the deal. And then for it to be so easy for my bosses at the airport to be like, yeah, we'll accommodate you. Um, it just, it just all worked out. It was just pretty much smooth sailing from that point. Well, we are glad that you are hopping back in the haunted house this year. I'm glad to see that. It's so exciting to see you back. Um, any expectations, anything you're looking forward to this season, anything that gets you in the spirit, what would be those things? Honestly, right now, the biggest thing is I miss, I miss my fly rig. 
I miss scaring people, those jump outs, those people just thinking I'm kind of an animatronic. I am hopefully uh, hoping to branch out and maybe stretch uh, my legs and help out in the clown house a little more this year. Cool. Because I do like clowning around with you guys. It's always been fun the few times I've gotten to do it. And then maybe, just maybe, uh, do a little bit of icon training this year. We can definitely figure that out. Because I've, I've pretty much played the same character the entire time I've been working here, and she's been more and more fleshed out and grown into more of a actual character than just a caricature of different inspirations and pieces and points. And so to kind of give her a full personality and make her a person would be awesome this year. Cool. Well, we're really excited. We appreciate you for hopping on. I'm glad to be here. And you. we are very excited for the season. This is Luna, one of the darkness OGs right here, coming back in. She filling out her paperwork. It's going down. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a great season. So we appreciate you. All love to you. All love to the Hunt fam. Yes. Now, as we are winding down this podcast episode, we got Kenneth Kincaid right here. This is our lead actor. This is the guy that when the kids that need to go use a bathroom because they didn't use a bathroom before the hunt opened, we call for him. He can fill and act in every scene. Allegedly. He can fill and act in every single yes. scene. We only got a couple minutes left, but we want to hear how did you get into haunting and what keeps you coming back every year? Um, I got in mostly because of people I knew who were already in it. Um, I come back, um, I, I was bullied a lot as a kid, so the main reason I come back is because there's all these kids who are in this industry who don't have a place that they feel normal or they feel themselves. Some of them don't even have their homes they don't feel welcome in. Um, I just want to make sure that when they come here, they know we are their family, we got their back. We love that they're weird. We love that they're not normal. Um, and we're going to make sure that they have fun and they feel loved and they feel taken care of. Um, I didn't have that when I was a kid, so I want to make sure that I have that for all the kids who are coming. And then when my kids are old enough to be coming, I hope that um, they pass that on to them as well. So we are family. Um, you know, uh, I've known Mike and Jen for years now. Um, I married them. Um, Mike is, is, is the only, uh, Mike and Kit Polly um, from 13th Floor um, are my true and true brothers, um, the only brothers I've ever had, and I would die for them. So I want to keep this family going That's and keep this safe place going. That's that haunt love, haunt family love. Yes. That he that did. was that was real good, right, man. man we appreciate you for hopping on, Kenny. Over here. To close us out because we only have about, about a minute seconds. and a half left. Jen, you want to close us out? <laughs> Tell us what podcast this is. This you are our first guest. Yeah. You were... Toxic Icon Podcast. Toxic Icon Podcast. My name is Nick White. Yardy G. Jalen. And this has been another episode, a live audition episode of the Toxic Icon Podcast. Like, comment, subscribe, keep it going. We have more coming for you. Stay toxic. Oh.